Hello, my name is Prime, and welcome back to ETS2 Showcases. And today we're going to explore the newly reworked Rhine region of Germany, one of two brand new reworked sections that have come in with ETS2's 1.50 experimental beta. So today we're going to haul some rice from here in Dortmund, and we're going to head down to Dusseldorf today. Not a crazy long delivery. However, this is the brand new Rhine region section that has been redone. Fun fact, these four brand new reworked cities essentially make one mega city here in the ETS2 map due to the scale. So although we are going between Dortmund and Dusseldorf at the same time, we're supposedly staying kind of within one quote-unquote mega city, which is kind of neat. And to haul this rice to Dusseldorf, we're going to be driving the DAF XD today, and we're going to be using the very, very small Wilton Container Trailer. Now, for those who saw my ETS2 1.50 Experimental Beta First Look video, I used the large version of this trailer, and this is just the baby version that can only fit one smaller container. So with no further ado, let's go ahead and get this DAF XD started up and get on the road. Once again, as I am running ETS2 1.50 Experimental Beta as of recording this video, I am not using any mods today. Everything you hear and see is ETS2 through and through. Alrighty, let's go ahead and get on the road. Hopefully everyone is doing well. I certainly am. Great to be back here in ETS2 once again here in the Experimental Beta of 1.50. I know a lot of you have been enjoying the update and of course including myself. Thank you to everyone who enjoyed the first look video here on the ETS2 side of things. I know a lot of you were commenting on the update, giving your opinions on things, and overall, very, very nice to have 1.50 here for ETS2. And in fact, I am recording this video after probably one of the biggest updates uh, to the experimental beta that we've had uh, thus far uh, for both games, actually. Uh, as far as I could tell, um, I'm pretty sure ETS2 updated as well, uh, not just ATS. I get a lot of updates in my uh, Steam library these days. Uh, everything from the experimental betas to mods that I have installed for other games and, uh, well, just other games in as well. So I've got a lot happening, so I'm trying to keep track of everything. But as far as I know, this is post kind of a a bit of a fix, basically, for the experimental beta. And from what I could tell from loading in and uh, starting things here in the game, everything seems to be running really, really well. And I'm very happy to report that, um, as, of course, there are some things that have needed some fine-tuning, and there's no lie about that one. Well, considering this is an experimental beta, and there are quite a few things with the graphics side uh, that have been redone, obviously, with TAA and so on, uh, that take a lot of fine-tuning, but I'm happy to report everything seems to be running quite smoothly, and uh, I haven't had uh, any issues. Uh, well, actually, over here in ETS2, really at all, in all in all fairness, um, I have been quite impressed with how things have been going, and I really don't need to swing out that much, because I am not driving an American Truck Simulator. I am also driving a very, very, uh, or I, I should say I'm driving a pretty small truck, not, I mean, a DAV XD in its smaller form is the, well, really the smallest truck in ETS2. Um, I am not driving it, <laughs> obviously, in its smallest form. I decided to give it a little bit of extra, well, stature, shall we say. But we are uh, hauling uh, this, well, we, I guess we're hauling the rice here with the smallest, one of the smaller trailers in the game. Uh, so I guess there is something that should count for that one. And it looks like we're just going to be following uh, this truck up here. Uh, we are heading down to uh, Dusseldorf. I'm going to say that... Um, semi-confidently. <laughs> Pretty sure I'm saying that uh, quite correct, so uh, hopefully I am indeed. And this is such a wonderful area indeed. All the reworks are so good that SDS Software do. Uh, of course, here in e we'll talk here specifically on ETS2, uh, as obviously that's where we're driving today, but obviously for those who play or at least know about the American Truck Simulator side of things, you will know how good uh, the reworks over there are. And so across the board, the reworks are just something special. And I mean, this is something to marvel at here in uh, this particular Rhine region. It's a beautiful region of Germany and one that has a lot of history and honestly has a lot to offer visually as well. And it is so great to finally have this area well revamped to the point where we can actually enjoy it. And I think I've got to be going this way. Looks like I do. So we're going to commit with it. And is this some rain? Oh my word, we're getting some rain. I haven't had rain in an episode for quite some time, but it is very, very, um, well, sunny out. So, um, are there any clouds, like, anywhere? Daytime rain. Very, it is a rare occasion, and it does happen, so I'm not going to uh, put it past it. But there is actually a photo monument beside us, and I would assume it's the tower. 
Well, that is quite neat, actually. <laughs> I do enjoy that a lot. So we're just going to put the wipers maybe on. Hello? There we go. I guess first tick, I think, is uh, I have it as a... Is it automatic wipers? I think it's automatic wipers here. Or maybe it's just a very high intermittent. I cannot really tell. But we're going to get over here. This little DAF XD is uh, struggling a little bit getting up the hill hauling this race. Um, it's actually a fair weight, I must say. Uh, a little bit of screen uh, herky-jerky there. Uh, well, 38,000 pounds. Nothing uh, too shabby, at least. And, uh, yeah, it's... Uh, I mean, it's not a major truck by any means. It's not made for massive hauls. And uh, it is... Oh, we got to actually get to go over here to our left-hand side. So we got to make sure we do that. Um, it's definitely not made for the heavy hauls. Let's call it at that. So honestly, this trailer works really well with it. It's not the biggest thing in the world. And it uh, doesn't need to be as well. And uh, in fact, there's actually a bigger container trailer just there to our right. Uh, which is kind of interesting. But we got the superior one. We've got the Wheelton trailer here uh, with all its glory. Uh, for those who saw what I configured last week, uh, the little, or at least talked about it, actually, I didn't show the configure uh, the configuration page for the trailer. However, um, the, for anyone who owns the Wilton Trailer Pack DLC and just to clarify, you must own the Wilton Trailer Pack DLC to experience these Container Master trailers within ETS2 1.50. Uh, uh, however, anyone who owns those DLCs and have configured trail or that DLC, I should say, and have con configured other Wheatland trailers in the past, you will recognize the uh, different options that you have to customize the trailers uh, quite quickly. <laughs> uh, there's nothing I, I will complete. I will be 100% honest and say that there is not a whole lot new uh, in terms of options, kind of all your standard Wheatland accessories, as you would expect in all fairness, considering it is basically a, well, it's a fleet trailer. Um, same accessories basically across all different models, just some customization here and there. Uh, but not to say that they're not fantastic trailers, but it is nice that it's just a free addition to anyone who already owns the DLCs. It's kind of a nice addition there. Uh, so in terms of this small trailer, anyone uh, who goes to configure the large trailer, main difference is that you just don't have as many slots for putting extra accessories. Mainly, uh, you don't have the space between the, the uh, rear axle of the trailer and then the bumper uh, for some of the extra well, normal, um, shall I say, uh, accessories that would normally get added there. So keep that in mind if you are doing that. But I think for this truck, honestly, this kind of freight is very good. And I could have gotten away with a, um, a, sing well, a, a single drive axle for this DAF XD 100%. And uh, generally, that's what I... Well, I, actually, I believe that's what I used last time I drove the DAF XD. I used the very, very small, uh, more duty or rugged... Uh, bumper configuration basically really short stature little guy uh, but it was really fun to drive as well uh, now it says that Dorf, Dusseldorf is that way however uh, some of you uh, I'm going to kind of divert from the DAF XD here long story short great fun little truck and I think this cargo works well was it back to what I was going to say so you, some of you may have noticed in the intro for those who have key and eye that I actually put down a bit of a way marker on the uh, delivery today and that is actually for a very good reason I wanted to extend this delivery because I wanted to explore the, the Rhine region but with most of the cities being quite compact as I mentioned there briefly in the intro um, it's one of those things that I wanted to make sure that everyone could get a fair sense of what to expect as we're driving through this wonderful area. I mean, I've been talking about some other things, but a lot of these showcases when it comes to exploring the Rhine region or these uh, various uh, reworked sections, obviously Switzerland was the other one for those who may not know. Uh, Germany is one of two, uh, Switzerland being the other phases of a rework that have come in for ETS2 here within the update. Uh, but I decided let's extend the route explore a different area and it just circles back uh, basically to our delivery point and in fact as you can tell by the gps there on the truck we'll be going underneath the highway there uh, in just uh, a few moments time so it's really not that much extra uh, delivery time or length in any by any means but it gives us a little extra time to chat and also uh, gives us some time to well uh, explore this wonderful area and see what it has to offer and I mean at least it's fairly clear and bright uh, for the fact that it's raining I'll take it honestly um, if it's gonna rain through an episode which I generally well actually I do I shouldn't say I generally do um, I do oh actually we're down by the airport aren't we I think uh, but we need to go this way how neat that's, uh, see, that it's a big mall, but it looks like the airport, judging by the infrastructure around here or something. Um, I'm probably wrong by that, but, you know, uh, you live and you learn. Um, <laughs> uh, 
it, it's a really cool area and it's just really nice to be able to explore that and i wanted to explore some of this other area of the rework and kind of just circle around in what this city is and it is true um, honestly, kind of making one mega city, although it is separated, obviously, we were on the motorways. Uh, and it's very nice to, uh, well, just see what some of the areas are and how it really does integrate into one, essentially, mega city here in ETS2. In reality, as far as I know, they're a little bit more spread apart than, you know, making it one mega city. However, and I, I swung out again, I pulled an American Truck Simulator turn there, but we got away with it. We got away with it, indeed. Um, but yeah, no, it's, a uh, it, in ETS2, it makes it very much more almost like a simulated mega city, which is honestly really cool, and I don't mind that at all. And uh, that's why I'm just figuring, you know what? Let's do a little bit of a detour around here and explore. Now, I haven't had rain, as I mentioned here in a video for quite some time. And normally I try and keep things uh, nice, bright, and uh, well, generally clear for the sake of the video. Well, just for you guys watching. Now, although it is quite realistic for it to rain, uh, I just generally, for the sake of showcases and stuff, it's not, weather isn't generally something that, oh, I should have, I, <laughs> one time I don't swing out and go to the exterior cam to kind of bloat about it, or bro, uh, the uh, brag about it. There you go. Oh, and there was a uh, monorail going along there, so that must be the airport over there. Anyways, side, uh, getting sidetracked. Um, <laughs> one time I go to try and uh, do, not do a wide cord and I hit the curb. Classic. Um, where was I going with this? Um, oh yes, performance. I was going to talk about the performance in the rain. I normally don't have, um, well, I, I really don't experience uh, performance issues uh, too often now. I've done a lot of fine tuning here on ATS and ETS2 uh, to try and get the games running well to the best of my ability given uh, the recording standard that I try and uphold and of course the visual quality and uh, I must say thank you to everyone who comments on the visual quality of the videos. I do work hard <laughs> to try and uh, uh, get them to the standard and quality that I do and although there is no golden ticket, uh, there are I, I can't really say, you know, do this, do that for optimum performance because it depends on what refresh rate, depends on what resolution you're trying to run, so on. But generally speaking, there are certain, like the presets are pretty good. But I've done a lot of fine tuning for the sake of recording because obviously it adds extra load to my computer that most of you probably won't do. <laughs> but if you do uh, and have experience of recording kind of ups and downs, then you will most certainly understand what I'm talking about was the constant troubleshooting and updating things to try and figure out what you can do best. But what I was trying to get about in a roundabout way um, is saying that with the beta here, uh, and although there have been uh, various graphical improvements, I have been very impressed by the fact that I have not had to downgrade any of my graphics settings. In fact, I pushed them up. Yes, you heard me correct. I pushed them up. I obviously introduced TAA and I need to be turning left. Ah, classic Prime Move 101 here. Uh, it's just... Why not? It's... It just wouldn't be a Prime Simulation episode without it. So we're just going to uh, go left here. Thank you. Sorry, car behind me. You're mighty confused. I don't blame you. I just... Yeah. Typical Prime Move. Don't worry about it. Anyways, I actually put it up. So obviously, addition of TAA. Um, I normally don't run... Uh, the anti-aliasing... That was already in ETS2 and ATS. Well known that it was not very efficient and not the best. That's why TAA got added. And it's the first step of making things a lot better here. Uh, in terms of graphics and the anti-aliasing methods. So I never really ran the anti-aliasing that high. And it's actually... Um, it's something that, you know, had a bit of a visual effect. But I compensated it for running 400% scaling. I had equipment to be able to do so, however, it did really help a lot with that. So, anti-aliasing really hurt performance, however, scaling, when you turn anti-aliasing to low in ETS2, for example, really kind of balances each other out in terms of performance. So, things actually look a lot better, but doesn't take a whole lot more uh, performance, which... I tend to enjoy. Uh, so that's kind of where I generally go with things. But TAA, I just cranked it to the max, uh, max sharpen, and honestly, things are looking really good. Now, things also come with a bit of a change that I've done with recording, uh, recording methods, encoders, and all this good stuff, and upscaling the videos to 4K for YouTube's sake, so it appears more visually pleasing uh, 
on you, the viewer's end, uh, just because of, well, I could go on and I've talked about it before, but a whole on in-depth thing about how YouTube's encoders work and all this stuff for when you watch a video, uh, how the algorithm pro or in, and their software processes thing, the platform itself, I could get into that. I'm not going to do that today, but the point is I've done a lot of work behind the scenes, so that also plays in, uh, a factor as well for what you uh, interpret in terms of visual quality. All to say, thank you for uh, appreciating uh, how it looks. And honestly, I can't take all the credit, although I've done a lot to try and transfer this visual quality to you. Um, at the same time, the games have to deliver it as well. And generally speaking, all the games that play around here on the channel are just absolutely fantastic to look at. And it looks like there's a stadium here too. Very neat. Nice to see. Lovely detail here in the city. I'm happy I went this route as well. Um, makes it uh, ma makes it look a lot nicer, may I say. Or a n nicer journey, a little bit more relaxed as well. Oh, they got it. some advertisements there. <laughs> Wafflos.ses. That's, uh, that's really funny. <laughs> that's funny. Created their own website in a dot ses as a dot com basically that is a great great job at ses software i love that kind of stuff i love to see the that kind of detail around here um in a map top class top class the other thing was it being actually raining which is something that i'm actually quite happy now thinking about it as i'm just kind of and i know you probably have been commenting all you good old keyboard warriors uh, who managed to pick up things so quickly which thank you by the way because you pick up a lot of things that i miss in videos uh, because it happens there's a lot of things that i'm balancing uh however uh it is absolutely fantastic uh to uh be able to well see the the wheel spray from the rain here on some of the roads when you get up to certain speeds like for example uh from the camper trailer there all the particles now they did kind of exist a little bit before but the new particles and with the, like the mud and rain look a whole lot better and uh, react with the light a whole lot nicer. And the fact that it's actually sunny and raining, um, oh, we got to stop here, uh, is very interesting. Now, I'm not going to lie. I see not me in the reflection of that window. And I just realized that is what's behind me. Um, potential issue. Now, once again, beta people. <laughs> I don't know if that's a common thing. Maybe I'm just noticing that now as I'm trying to pick up uh, details, but, uh, that doesn't seem right. Uh, I, apparently I'm invisible. I'm just, uh, this kind of existing entity of, well, air, <laughs> basically. Air and simulated metal, which honestly is, si the simulated metal bit isn't, um, too far off the truth, but, uh, <laughs> actually it is the truth, but, uh, when it comes to seeing the car behind me, that's a little odd, I will admit that. Uh, so it looks like, oh, they've actually been quite nice to us today with the delivery. So we're going to try and uh, snake our way into the prep of this delivery. Give ourselves so much room because this is a huge trailer and truck combo. Uh, and we're going to reverse this into the spot. Oh, very, with a very, very quick turning radius, as I should come to expect. Um, and also, thank you. Whoa, a little bit of herky-jerky. Okay, never mind. Performance issues may not be 100% there. And actually, it seems to be every time the menu opens, funny enough. Um, every time the on-screen info menu opens, there seems to be a bit of a game lag. So that will, I'm sure, will 100% go away uh, by the time the full release happens. However, it's happening right now, uh, so it's a little bit annoying. But I, this is the only thing from the, that big update that I've actually noticed, to be honest. So we're going to head and uh, shut off the truck here. And uh, I guess I should have, you know, I've been doing this long enough. I should know to uh, close out or shut the truck off before closing out the menu because it just opens it up again. But I guess I could also hide that menu thinking about it now. There is an option for that. And I generally just try and hide that menu at all costs too. So um, I think I may have just answered my question. And from now on, you may not see that pop up happening too often. However, fantastic delivery. It's great to be back here at ETS2 exploring the 1.50 experimental beta a little bit more. And of course, here in the Rhine region of the Germany rework, it's a fantastic addition to ETS2. And we're going to be exploring more here in ETS2 as well, probably back into Switzerland next episode, as there's a lot more to explore over there. But of course, we'll be back here in Germany to explore some of the other areas of the Rhine region. Once again, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.